Greetings everyone and welcome back to Teen Meets World with yours truly, Danny Owens, and my dad, slash co-host, Martin Owens. Yes, let's go. This time, we're going to talk about more cartoon stuff that were made by Hanna-Barbera. Oh, this is true nostalgia, this, Danny. This is a nostalgic episode. Yeah, very nostalgic. Loose talk about Hanna Barbera. Yes, there's of course uh, there's a lot of uh, cartoons to talk about, and uh, the the first ever the first Hanna Barbera cartoon that we're going to talk about in this episode is Scooby Doo. Scooby Scooby Doo. That's right. Hanna Barbera did Scooby Doo. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Well, Scooby Doo, they're still going. We talk, we were on about Scooby Doo in the Halloween episode, weren't we? Yeah, we were. It's all about when, uh, when, when I did say five of the members of Mystery Incorporated, they go around hunting for ghosts, and Big Row Two was the mastermind behind all this. There's uh, a lot of bad guys, aren't they, pretending to be ghosts? But you know. Yeah, they've all got masks on. Yeah, they've always got masks on to trick, uh, to trick Mystery Inc. Most nobly, Shaggy and Scooby Doo. Raggy, I'm a roast. Like, let's get out of here, man. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I love Scooby Doo, you know. Yeah, and because Scooby Doo became so popular in the two thousands. Back in 2002, there was a live-action Scooby-Doo film. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good as well. Yeah, which stars Matthew Lillard, mm. Sar Sarah Michelle Gellar, Freddie Prince Jr., Linda Cardellini, Rowan Atkinson, and Isla Fisher, and many other cast members, along with a sequel in 2004. And I'll do a third one. Nah. No? One of my favourite cartoons as a kid. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, there's loads. Do you know what? I didn't realise that that was hard. Very, you know. Well, I didn't either. And luckily, I know what I'm going to say because I know that uh, Frank Welker, he's usually the voice of Fred in the Scooby-Doo franchise, but then took over the voice of Scooby-Doo when Don Messick passed away in 1997. Oh, right. Didn't know that, Danny. Yeah, and Frank, Fred, and Frank's still been going. He's still going on, really. Even though he's currently in his late 70s, he'll always be Fred to us and Scooby Doo. Hmm. Well, you know what? I was never a fan of uh, Scrappy Doo. I thought he was a bit annoying. Yeah, that's what everyone, all Scooby Doo fans, uh, know about. The, uh, they all know that uh, Scrappy Doo is a, uh, a bit of a, you know what? What were you going to say about me? Uh, uh, were you going to say annoying? How dare you? Um, sorry, uh, Scrappy. Well, good riddance to all of you. Good day. Oh well. <laughs> That was a bit... I'm uh... sorry to laugh there, Danny. Is that Scrappy Doo? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's move on, because we've got loads to go through. Can't talk about Scooby-Doo all day, as much as we'd love to, everyone. Oh, yes. <laughs> Next up is another Hanna-Barbera cartoon that features a dog. It's called Hong Kong Fooey. Oh, I loved that. I loved Hong Kong Fooey. Yes, with the voice talent of yeah. Scatman Brothers, who Disney fans will recognise as Scat Cat in the Aristocats. He's the voice of the title character of Hong Kong Fooey. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now that is bringing back memories, Danny. That was mid in the 70s, you know. Oh, yes, the 1970s, the disco, the time for disco and stuff like that. Scatman Crothers. Yeah, he's the title character. Yeah. Joey Ross. Yes. He was uh, Sergeant Flint. 
Now, these are classic patterns. Yeah, very classic. Originally, in the 2000s, there was going to be a plan for a live-action film of Hong Kong Fu that would star Eddie Murphy. But sadly, that got uh, scrapped and cancelled. Oh, right. When were we going to make that? I don't know, 2004-ish? I don't know. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, well, <clears throat> definitely one to mention. And if you haven't seen it, I'm sure you can look up, guys. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, so what else we got? Next up is, well... <laughs> I know tog dogs don't usually get along with cats, but I believe there is a Hanna-Barbera show featuring cats. Top Cat! Okay, DC! Hey, you Officer Dibble! <laughs> Top Cat, I've got my eye on you! <laughs> I love Top Cat. I loved, um... They, did a, they brought out a movie, didn't they? Not so many years back. Oh, yeah, that was back in 2011. Is that when that was? Yes, the Top Cat movie. And then in 2016, there was an an origin uh, Top Cat film made with CGI that included uh, the tale of how Top Cat met his gang and how they got together. I think it's the, is it the 2011 one that, that I like then, the one where they start censoring the, the language in it? Well, actually, the 2011 Top Cat film... It features robots. Is that the one I'm talking about, though? No, but the uh, 2016 <clears throat> one, Top Cat Begins, is the one where Top Cat, well, he fights off a uh, a villain who's named Mr. Big, or for what, uh, or for what all people in the city uh, refer to as, I whisper, Mr. Big. Who is this Mr. Big? Everybody talks about. Did you know Top Cat was created as a parody of the Phil Silver show with Ronald Stein? I mean, good. Yes. I knew, I, I knew he had something to do with it, but I didn't know that. Yeah. But, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, Dad, the one did, and that film was, was also the one you were talking about. Where Top Cat mm. says a curse word in front of the mean villain and it becomes censored. It was a little bit inappropriate for children to see, but it is for a good laugh amongst all Hanna Barbera fans and all audience. Something Danny was hilarious, that. Yeah. Hey, hey, Mr. Big. Beep. Oh, yeah, that's better. <laughs> I, I was laughing, man. I didn't expect that at all when, <clears throat> when we were watching that. That was so good. I should have yeah. come. I should have came with a better line, but the other side, of the very the friends thing was kind of cheesy. <laughs> One of my favorite um, Barbera cartoons, Danny, was the Wacky Racers. Oh yes, let's talk about the Wacky Racers. Oh, this was amazing. Yeah, we, it does feature the voice talent of Paul Winchell before he became the voice of Tigger for the Winnie the Pooh franchise. Well, who did he do? Um, He's the voice of Dick das Dastardly. Oh, I liked his dog. <laughs> Motley, <laughs> this is all your fault. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I, thought I, could, I thought I could do it. <clears throat> I thought I could do it. <coughs> right, sorry about that. Yeah. Loved it. Oh, yes. Oh. It does... It did get spin-offs like The Perils of Penelope Pitstop and, of course, uh, The Ghastly and Mutley and their uh, Mysterious Flying Machines. Stop the pigeon. Stop the pigeon. Stop the pigeon. Stop the pigeon. Oh, I remember that. Was that Hannah Barbera? Yep. Stop the Pigeon. Is that what it was called? I do remember it. Well, it's actually uh, it's actually called Dick Dastardly and Mutley and their mysterious flying machines. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So who do you reckon won most of the Wacky Races? 
Well, uh, I like uh, the, the the best one without the spin-offs, the uh, the uh, the first Wacky Racers one. Yeah, but who do you think won most of the races? I think it was Penelope Pitstop. Yeah, Penelope Pitstop. She's gorgeous, man. <laughs> Very gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Gorgeous, mate. <laughs> ah. So where do these rank then? Were you, Danny? I think um, I think this was probably my favourite, you know, Wacky Race. Yeah, very good. And Top Cat. Yes, good. Then again, you've got the Flintstones. Yeah, the Flintstones. Yeah, let's talk about the Flintstones. Yeah, but I do. Yeah. Yeah, I like the Flintstones. That was... Uh, Oh, I think so. I've got a favourite now because now I'm going to see the Flintstones. Ah, oh, good. Anyway, uh, so the Flintstones, it it focuses on, it takes place in the Stone Age, apparently. Yeah, these were amazing cartoons. They were amazing cartoons. <laughs> now I know, fun fact, you know that Yogi Bear made a cameo appearance in the Flintstones. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> sure did. Wow, how smart are all of you, but not as smart as the average bear. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we've jumped on to Yo Yogi Bear, actually. We need to, we're need. we talking about the Flintstones, aren't we? Yeah. Because then they made some movies as well. Yeah, they did make uh, live-action ones with the first Flintstone movie and Flintstones Viva Rock Vegas, where it takes place before the Flintstones and how uh, Fred and Barney met Wilma and Betty. John Goodman? Yeah, he's... Rick Moranis? Yes, along with uh, Mark... Acres or Atkins, whatever his name is, and Stephen Baldwin in Fever Rock Vegas. Oh, yeah. Well, he played Barney in that one, didn't he? Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm coming right back at you, Fred. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Have you got a favourite between those two films? I like the first Flintstones movie. Well, yeah, me too. John Goodman. Yes, that yeah. one. Yeah, I like that one as well. That was good. Did they ever do, um... Oh, do you know what? I was about to ask. Did they ever make a, a Yogi Bear movie? They did? Oh, yes. In fact, let's go right on ahead and talk about my show. <laughs> the Yogi... <laughs> Can't do it. Oh, come on, Yogi. <laughs> Everybody here needs to talk about our movie. Was that not, um... Justin Timberlake, did he not play Boo Boo? Yeah, in the live action Yogi yeah. Bear film. <laughs> Along with Dan Aykroyd as Yogi. Oh, yeah, well, he's. Yeah. You can tell it's him, can't you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, have you got a favourite um, between sort of your Flintstones movies and the Yogi Bear movie? Well, I absolutely adore uh, the Yogi Bear cartoon because I found out that Yogi Bear mm. was originated on the Huckleberry Hound show, and then it became a good spin-off to it. Ah, uh, yeah, you're, you're right. Do you know what? I've read that somewhere before. You're absolutely spot on there, you know. Yeah, it, it shows as Yogi and his little pal Boo Boo, they keep stealing every last picnic basket, or what Yogi calls it, a picnic basket. But then they were keep caught and stopped by Ranger Smith, is it? The Ranger? Yes, hey, Mr. Ranger. Yogi! <laughs> if I see you touch that uh, picnic basket again, then you're dead. <laughs> hear me, Yogi? Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Smith, Danny, yeah. Yes, it's Ranger John Francis Smith at your service, and welcome to Jellystone Park. 
<laughs> they never made another one, did they? They never made a Yogi, another Yogi Bear film. Yeah. It was only one Yogi Bear film. In fact, in the Yogi Bear film, originally, Cindy, Yogi's girlfriend, was going to appear in the film, but, but was cut out. Cindy? Yeah. <clears throat> You know, a yogi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, hey, and, uh, speaking of uh, yogi, let's talk about the Huckleberry Hound show. Do you know before we do? You know what we forgot? What? We forgot to, um, we forgot to mention our good friend, John Joel. Oh, uh, who, uh, who's, whose music you can hear at the start of the show. All right. Uh, Bed, Bedsit Manor. Sorry about that. Special thanks to Bedsit Manor, everybody. Yeah. Uh, you can check him out on Spotify as well. Yes, folks. <laughs> <clears throat> Better check it out. Yeah. That's got a really good beard. I know I've said that in previous episodes. Yeah, he has got a big beard. Yeah. Strong. Very strong as a lumberjack's beard. Be a, he is a bit lumberjacky, actually. I could see him wearing, like, you know, the, the lumberjack. Okay. But anyway, right, let's go. Yes, let's talk about the Huckleberry Hound Show. Good legs as well. Yes, let's go for it. So, this this uh, show was when where Yugi Bear came from, actually. So, what's this about, then? Well... Huckleberry Hound. Mm -hmm. This cartoon, it shows uh, many cartoon animals like not just Yogi, but also the title character of Huckleberry Hound. And it also features, if I'm not mistaken, there's Snoop and Blabber. I'm sure those characters have been on, on the Huckleberry Hound show, I believe. How many uh, episodes did you do? Do you know? We do a lot. I do remember it. I don't know a great deal about it. Hmm. Well, I think it was only, a, I don't know, 30, 13 episodes. All oh, right. So it's, it's William Hanna and Joseph Barbera. They're the, that's Hanna Barbera, isn't it? Yes, Hanna Barbera. Barbera. Hmm. And, uh, and next up, there's uh, the Jetsons. The oh, Jetsons. Oh, yes, the Jetsons. It's similar to the Flintstones, but takes yeah. place in in somewhere in a futuristic uh, place where robots and machines existed. Yeah. And flying, uh, flying spaceships instead of cars. However, they did include a film in 19... 89. It was also the last ever film to feature George Longley, is it? If I'm of oh, George O'Halen. George O'Halen, I think that's the name of the uh, the voice of George Jetson. As well as Mel Blanc before they passed away. They actually passed away during production of the Jetsons movie. So a voice actor named Jeff Bergman had to step in to record both lines. What about um oh who who's the link between the Jetsons and Yogi Bear? Is the one? Is there a voice actor? Or is it Yeah, they do have voice actors. They usually get voices actors like Don Messick and Charles Butler, Kathy Gorey, Janet Waldo. You know what I mean? Someone does a voice in the Jetsons that's also a voice in Yogi Bear, is that right, or is, am I wrong? Oh, yes, uh, uh, Dorse Butler, he does Yogi Bear's voice. And? And, and yes, and uh, George Jetson's little son, Elroy. Elroy, that was it. Yes, I knew there was a link. Elroy Jetson, yeah. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> God, Dad, Dad, can I watch the, uh, can I watch the TV tonight? Huh? Son, you have to do your homework first. Okay, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all orgy doggy ish with doggy daddy and everything. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, I like that. 
<laughs> so what's next on the list? Next up, well, yes, that is also the Smurfs. Yeah, the Smurfs. Well, they've made a couple of films, haven't they, from the Smurfs? Yeah, like both that were directed by Roger Gosnell, the same director for the live-action Scooby-Doo films, where it featured the voice talent of Katy Perry as Smurfette, George Lopez, Alan Cumming, Fred Armisen, Anton Yelchin, and the late Jonathan Winters, and John Oliver as well. As well as Hank Azaria as Gargamel. Oh yeah, of course, and he's he, we've talked about him, him as we, for The Simpsons and others, other things. Yeah, and I can't believe he gets to uh, play Gargamel. And did I mention Paul Winchell, not only he does Dick Dastardly in the original Wacky Reese's cartoon, yeah. but also in the original Smurfs cartoon, he does Gargamel. Oh, right. I will get you Smurfs if it's the last thing I ever do. <laughs> Come, Azriel, we've got a trap to set. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I do good with my gargamel cackle. You did actually. I've never heard you do that before. Good cackling. Good cackle, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, there is the live action Smurfs films. And then mm. in 2017, n there was another Smurfs film called Smurfs The Lost Village, directed by the, Sh the Shrek 2 and Nomi and Juliet director Kelly Asbury. And, mm. that, and that film featured the voice talents of Demi Lovato, Raina Wilson, Mandy Pentaken, Julia Roberts. Um, there's also uh, Jack McBrayer, Joe Magnello, and Danny Pudi, best known for voicing Huey in the DuckTales reboot. Ah, I love Ray Wilson. He's in the American Office. Oh, yes. He's brilliant. Oh, yeah. But I'm not sure if his version of Gargamel is better than Hank Azaria's or Paul Winchell's. I don't know which is which. Which is a better me than... Any of you other me's? <laughs> when was the last one made? Well, the last Smurfs film. You mean, they're talking about the last Smurf film, you know Smurfs The Lost Village? Mm -hmm. 2017. While uh, the live-action Smurfs films, the first one, was in 2011, and then two years later was the Smurfs 2 in 2013. It wasn't that, that long ago, really, then, was it? Not really. I thought it was ages ago. Very ages, but yes, the Smurfs cartoon itself, it was in the 1980s, apparently. Yeah. And it ended the exact same year as the Jet as the Jetson movie, Jetson's movie got released in 1989. I can't believe it was that long ago. Yeah, it was very long, actually. Hmm. Yeah. So, do you know if they made, do you know if they, they, they were going to make another Scooby-Doo movie? Yeah. Who do you think would be good at playing like, actually not Scooby-Doo, because we've, we've had We've had a few of them. So if they were going to make another Flintstones movie, who do you think would be good at Fred? I don't know, but I still think John Goodman is the best uh, Fred Flintstone in the uh, in the original Sm uh, Flintstones movie. Who's in the second one? Oh, I know who it is. It's him from uh, it's the English actor in the second one. Oh, yes. Um, Mark Edgar's by any chance. Is that, isn't, is that, he's, in, um, he's in the film, will not he? Oh yeah, Mark. Uh, at, I'm sure this guy is a. Uh, let I don't know. I can't. Uh, I don't know his surname. Well, it doesn't matter. Do you know why? Why? Because I've got Google right here. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to pronounce uh, Mark's uh, name if I don't know what it is. I can't remember. I know he was in um, Mark Addy. Mark Addy. That's it. Mark Addy. Yeah. He's in loads of things. Oh yeah, not just the full Monty, but I never knew somebody British would be the voice of uh, Fred. Yeah. Uh, and Bob's your uncle. Uh. 
Yeah. Right, so what we're talking about what we're next, Danny, what we've got. Next up, we've got... We have got... Josie and the Pussycats. Josie and the Pussycats? Oh, yes. Right, uh, let me have a look at it. Uh, um, yeah, and the, ah, here we go. Right then. The members of an all-girl rock band seem to have a, have a knack for crossing paths with the Parmad lunatics and assorted uh, other crazies along with their concert route. In this cartoon spin-off of characters who first appeared in the Archie Comics comic book series, Level-headed Josie is the singer-guitarist of the group, backed by ditzy drummer Melody and brainy tambourine player Valerie. I can't say I ever watched this, you know. Hmm. Oh, right. Did you watch it? Hmm, not quite, but... Oh, well, we're just less than uh, what the Hanna-Barbera guys have done, aren't we, really? Yeah. And then there's Johnny Quest, featuring a ten-year-old boy who is the son of a governing scientist and uh, this this person that that kid Johnny Quest he goes on a on a spy mission with his good Hindu friend uh, um Aji I think his name is a uh, hmm right uh, I don't know who the, uh, the Hindu boy is called and then there's uh, Magilla Gorilla. Who? Magilla Gorilla. Magilla Gorilla? Well, I definitely don't know this one. Oh, yes. Uh, it's the story... It, it features a gorilla who lives in a shop window. No, never heard of this one. Is this... How old is this, then? Um, night, uh, there's... Uh, it's old anyway, isn't it? It's very old yeah. because it's like the 1950s, 60s, or 70s, or 80s. Mm. Right, okay. Right, well, I don't know anything about this one, but anyway, it could be, could be something for, um, for us to check out and for anyone else to look up. Yeah, good. And then we have... Uh, then we have Quick Draw McGraw. El <laughs> Kabong! <laughs> I remember this. Quick draw McGraw. Oh yes. <laughs> this uh features a a horse named uh Quick Draw McGraw, who's not bad of a gunslinger really from the Wild West, who has a uh, who has a secret identity called El Capong, a superhero uh, kind of uh mariachi guy or caped crusader or Something like uh, Zorro. Zorro, right. Zorro. Zorro. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And then we have uh, Peter Potamus, which features a, a cartoon hippopotamus who goes exploring around the world, a la Around the World in 80 Days. And finally, last but not least, we have a, a Hanna-Barbera show. That's not really animated, but does feature yeah. costumed characters. Oh, what's this? The Banana Splits Adventure Hour. <coughs> I'm saying all this one. Did you watch this? Well, I was a little bit familiar with it. It features me, which is a uh, Bengo, and me, Fleagle, <laughs> and Drooper, and. This is Snorky. <laughs> Snorky. <laughs> Snorky. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Snorky, baby elephant. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes, that series took audiences by storm, and it's even got a theme song to it. Tra la 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 la. Tra la 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 la. That theme song ended up in one scene of the DreamWorks from the Boss Baby. That's in. Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> That's in loads of things, that, isn't it? 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> and on, and uh, I know this is a kind of bit, uh, you know, but the Banana Splits did get a movie, but it wasn't aimed at uh, younger audiences, but it was more of a horror film similar to Five Nights at Freddy's. Really? Yeah, that's right. They showed uh, the characters more like uh, robots <coughs> than costumed characters. Oh, well, I did not know that. Yeah, it did upset a bit of Hanna Barbera characters, really. That's not the film that we want. It's supposed to be kid friendly. Not a massing, not a massacre thing. Oh, Danny, I did not know that. And I think that's all the Hanna Barbera stuff that we're talked about now. So uh, thank you all for joining in this marvelous Hanna Barbera show talk on Teen Mates World. I'm finished. Yeah, that's right. Huh. Well, I was going to see if I had any fun facts. And I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, that takes you back, doesn't it? Yeah, it does take Talk you back. These, these cartoons. Yeah. Yeah, they're very old timey. So, right. I know it's really hard, but where would you like sort of list these cartoons in like your favourite Hannibal era cartoons? Like like for me, I think I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for Top Cat. It, I'm gonna go for Top Cat and Scooby Doo. Oh right, so we're having two, right? Okay, I'm gonna go for Top Cat and Flintstones. Oh yes. And that goes for the Jetsons as well, and the Smurfs. Oh right, okay, yeah, Jets. Right, I'm gonna go Top Cat, Flintstones, Yogi Bear. Yes, and Yogi Bear. And Jetsons. Yes, and the Jetsons. Yeah. Oh, what am I talking about? Wacky Races. Yes, and Wacky Races. Right, oh. I'm going Wacky Races, Top Cat, Flintstones, Yogi Bear. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with that. Okay. So that's like nearly all of them, but. What's your top three? Name three. You're going on a desert island. You can only take three, three of these cartoons with you. What three are you going to take? Uh, I'll take Scooby Doo, Top Cat, and the Flintstones. Yeah. Excellent choice, my dear Mr. Owens. <laughs> I'm going Flintstones, Top Cat, Wacky Races. Yeah. And what about all of you lovely listeners? Yeah, what is your favourite Hanna-Barbera cartoon? Yeah. Put it in the comments. Yeah, put it all in the comments below. Okay, so you're about to hear The Last of Us for today's episode, and you're also you're going to hear Vincent Manor. Check him out on Spotify. Lovely guy. Lovely musician. Yep. Yes. Very, a lot of, like, his face is very symmetric. Yeah, Even very... Even with like, that bushy beard, everything's Oh, yes, very, the... Uh, yeah, he does have a lumberjack look, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good Celtic man, but... Right, so... That's it from us, I think. Yeah. Tune in next time for this exciting inclusion of Teammates World! <laughs> <laughs> right, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, like it, share it. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Say goodbye, boo-boo. Goodbye, everybody. Is it lunchtime already, TC? I bet so, my dear Benny. <laughs> okay, TC. <laughs> Come on, Scoob. It's lunch break time. <laughs> he does this off the microphone as well. <laughs> <laughs> you said, Dad. You said it. <laughs> right.